Let's spend some time trying to understand what the asynchronous nature of JavaScript is. Because with JavaScript, unlike other classical languages, you're going to be relying on async a lot. Now, why asynchronous? The thing is, JavaScript is designed to run on the browser, right? The user's web browser. And typically, web browsers allocate just one processing thread per tab or per window of your browsing experience. So let's say you open your browser, you open a web page in a tab. What the browser is essentially doing is creating one thread, which is supposed to work for the sake of displaying that page in the tab, right? So any JavaScript that executes the printing and all that stuff, it's all handled by this one single processing thread. So because of this, JavaScript is usually considered to be a single threaded programming language, right? So you write JavaScript assuming that there's just one processing thread that's executing at any point of time, which means that every operation needs to be non-blocking. Think about it. You have a web page open, right? You're writing an Angular page and you have JavaScript to make a REST API call, to make an HTTP call. Now, let's say that thread, that one single thread, which is allocated for executing all your Angular code, right? Everything in that, in that window, in that uh, web page, is all handled by that one single thread. Now, if you say, hey, processor, go make this REST API call, and if that call were to be blocking, if the thread is waiting for that response to return, you've essentially frozen the browser window till that happens. Typically, a REST API request and a response takes about two-ish seconds. Not if it's a really fast API, but I'm just, and you know, on an average, it's probably gonna take like two seconds for a typical REST API. So when something like that happens, you don't want the user's browser to freeze. You don't want the JavaScript code to actually wait there while that HTTP call is happening. Right? We looked at the $HTTP.get in the previous uh, slide. When the $HTTP.get is executing, you don't want the whole thing to freeze. You want the next line to execute, and then once the response is got, only then you want to handle that response. So you don't want it to freeze. So every operation in JavaScript needs to be non-blocking. Now, how does this work? If you know, you need to make these calls, but the calls also need to be non-blocking and the calls do end up taking time. So how do you prevent this blocking? This kind of a long running request is typically handled using something called callbacks in JavaScript. If you've written code using jQuery, you're already familiar with callbacks. The concept of callbacks kind of leverages the idea of functions being things that you can pass uh, around to other functions in JavaScript, right? In JavaScript, you can take a function and pass it to another function. Right? That's a callback. So here's an example in jQuery of a callback. So what's happening over here is I'm using the document object to pass it to jQuery and say, when this document is ready, execute a function that I pass to you. Right? So I'm calling the ready function of the jQuery framework and I'm passing in a function. Right? So this function, open, close, open, curly brace, close, curly brace, this is an inline function, which is going as an argument to ready. Right? All that's happening is I'm calling ready with the function, the argument being an inline function. So what I'm doing over here is basically telling jQuery to say, hey, when the document is ready, call this function. I'm giving you a function that's in line. I don't want you to execute it right away. Wait till the document is ready. And only when that happens, execute this function. So notice what I'm doing here. I'm not holding the processing till the document is ready. It is not synchronous. It's not blocking. I've just told somebody else, some other framework, to execute it when it ends up getting ready, right? So when it does happen, well, there is one single thread, then that thread comes to executing it, but it doesn't wait for the document to be ready, all right? So here's another example, a button click. When a button is clicked, you want to wire in an event handler, right? So what are you doing over here? You're saying when this A anchor tag, sorry, not a button, when an anchor tag is clicked, you want a function to execute. So you pass that function as an argument to this other function. You're doing an inline over here. So essentially you're having this function executed asynchronously. You don't want this function to execute now. You're passing it to a framework to have it execute when a particular condition is met. So this is callbacks and this would work well for long running processing. Right? So let's say you have a long running process and you want to execute some code after that. You don't want to wait for that long running process to complete. Something like HTTP request, for example. You want to make a REST API call, you want to process the data after that REST API call is returned. Now, you don't want to actually have the browser thread wait for the REST API call to return. What you can do is 
pass a function along with that HTTP GET. You say, hey, HTTP service, make a GET request. And now here's this other function that I want you to execute when your GET request is complete. I know you're gonna take time. I'm not hanging around here waiting for you to complete the REST API call. I'm giving you this function. Go execute this function when you're done, right? This is asynchronous programming in JavaScript using callbacks. You pass a function to another function that's supposed to be long running so that you have that function execute the past function, right? The past function is a callback. The problem with callbacks, however, well, there is a problem with callbacks. The issue is that you can have a lot of these in JavaScript. If you've written some advanced JavaScript programming using callbacks, you'll be familiar with this. Now, here's a picture that I usually like to show, which shows how deep this callback you know, hierarchy can get. Now, what this is doing is, there's a function called hell, very aptly named, which is basically returning a function, right? So this function is calling load link, which is I'm guessing loading a link or a file, for instance. Now, when it loads the link, execute this other function, right? So this loading of the link is something that obviously takes a lot of time. So it, you're passing another function. It says when this is loaded, call this other function. And what does this function do? It loads another script, right? You see here, it loads it's another file. Now that can be long running as well. So you say, okay, after that is done, what do we do? We have to load something else. We pass in another function which loads something else. So all these are functions that you're passing to other functions to say, hey, when you're done, execute this other thing, right? So this goes all the way to the bottom. And now when the first thing is complete, right? So this load link function completes with style.css, for example. It's gonna say, okay, I'm done. Now I'm gonna execute the function that's passed to me. It's gonna look at this function, it's gonna execute it. Well, guess what that does? It loads another thing, so it waits for that to complete and so on. I hope you get the picture. This is what's commonly referred to as callback hell. That's probably why they've called this function as hell. You essentially end up with a structure like this. You have a function inside a function inside a function. And uh, if you've done decent amount of JavaScript programming, you will be familiar with this in a lot of the, you know, both client-side and server-side frameworks. You can, you can very easily end up with this kind of callback hell. So this is not a good pattern. Thankfully, the dollar HTTP service does not accept a callback to deal with the response. You, they could have done it, right? So dollar HTTP.get could have had a signature where the first parameter is the URL and the second parameter is a function that it needs to execute after it's gotten that URL, but they didn't do that. What the Angular team has created is another pattern. Uh, well, they haven't actually created it. It's a popular pattern that they have kind of leveraged and the pattern is something called promises. Promises is an alternative way of dealing with asynchronous programming. It kind of solves some of the uh, challenges of having callbacks and it definitely avoids that callback hell picture that I showed you in the previous slide. Now let's talk a little bit about what promises are. This is actually very vital to understand if you have to deal with dollar HTTP in Angular and making REST API calls. 